this video I'm just going to go through the uh, Hope uh, Pro 4. This is a rear hub, so we're looking basically at the free hubs. So we are looking at the Shimano uh, system, which is this kind of a original system that you probably recognise if you're into your mountain bikes. And then this is the SRAM XD driver. I don't really have any um, SRAM derailleurs or shifters, so this is kind of no use for me. There's a little kind of sound bite. So what we're going to do is remove this and put the Shimano one in. We're just going to compare them in terms of parts. So if you was doing this at home, you know, what kind of parts you would need to replace, if any. Um, one thing I'd like to say is with these kind of XD cassettes, if you try and fit this with this in place, sometimes you won't get the cassette tool in there. So it's kind of important to remove that little cap. They tend to just pull off. Um, it's good to put a little bit of grease on that rubber seal. Because if they get stuck on there, they can be a bit of a nightmare. And someone has damaged this one as well on this edge. Probably won't focus on it, but that kind of messed up me getting the cassette tool in there as well. So yeah, you would have to put this on and then tighten it. And then you would put uh, the little cap on. That's just a little kind of tip in regards to installing that. Um, in terms of if these do get seized on, what do I tend to use? I tend to use something like this which I just stick on the end and I just try and wiggle the actual thing up and down like that and pull on it at the same time and then eventually it should work loose. You can use um, bearing puller tools as well but um, if somebody's put it back on there properly you shouldn't really have a problem and the other thing is if you do grease it you may be thinking well isn't it just going to fly off or well, no because once it's in the frame and you've got your through axle on there it's going to lock that in place and it's going to hold that in place so it's not going to go anywhere. So yeah, we're going to take that off. We can reuse that. As far as I can tell, it uses the same end caps um, for the Shimano Free Hub. So that's kind of cool. Been looking at the Hope documents. Um, in order to remove this, it's just a pull system. So what I'm going to do is just twist it and pull it towards me. The pores and the springs should stay in uh, the actual Free Hub. And we're also this green rubber seal is going to come with us because it's connected to the bottom of the Free Hub. It's not connected to the actual hub itself. So we're just going to turn that and pull at the same time and there we go and that's what you're left with like I said the pores stay on there it's really quite a nice design makes things very easy and then you're left with uh, this kind of system there's also in there if I just grab a magnet there's a one mil oh no my magnet's over here so yeah have I got any swing magnets Spacer. We do have all the other parts as well, so we've got the Shimano parts ready to be done. So that's essentially that's the hub ready to have your Shimano one installed. So what I will do is I'll install the Shimano hub later on in the video. The next bit I'm just going to look at all the parts and compare them, just so you know the differences. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. So in terms of like comparing the two, they're ultimately the same. They run the same green seals. Um, the pores on the back and the springs are the same. They've got the same bearings as well. Um, there is a size on here, so it's a 17.28.7. So it'd be like a 28mm diameter on the outside of the bearing, 17 inside, and then the actual thickness of the bearing will be a 7mm. So they run two of them, and then there's a tube in the middle, which might be different, but I actually think it's the same tube. I'll put that in the description if it is. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's the same. The only difference really is the... Hopefully the Shimano one's longer. So if we put the seal to seal. But that's only really because it's got thread here. Um, yeah, for the lock ring to sit into. So yeah, ultimately if you had one of these and you wanted to swap them over, you don't need any additional parts. You can just do that straight away. Um, I'm gonna just look at uh, the pore system, right? So if you look here, there is a spring that sits there. And ultimately the short end of the spring is at the top. And then it goes around into the long bit at the bottom. And that just kind of flicks that back. In terms of adding any grease to this system. The only place I would really add um, grease is in this kind of groove area here. Where the actual pour moves. If you had a lot of grease to pours they might stick. And they might not engage properly. Um, so yeah, I think when it comes to grease as little as possible is a good one.
I don't know if you've seen like blue grease in a lot of this stuff. Like if you buy in hubs and that, there's a lot of like blue grease that you might see. Um, it's probably this stuff, which is one of the um, mobile greases. There we go, there's the name there. So that's what a lot of companies use. Um, so that's kind of a, I think it's kind of a medium thickness grease. But yeah, that's what I would do. Um, in terms of these seals as well, I've kind of cheated with this one because this is a bit of an old uh, worn seal. It doesn't fit too tight on there. Let me try and get the light on there. There we go. There we go, try that. Um, so ultimately you just kind of peel them up. You just kind of go around it and pull. You're kind of pulling outwards whilst pushing up at the same time. It's almost a little bit like fitting a tyre or removing a tyre from a bicycle rim. And then on the back side, it's kind of like a lip that sits there and it goes against the hub. And this is the part that you'll see. Um, I'm not going to say to run any grease or anything around this. I think if it's worn like this one, I'd probably say replace it because it just means water is going to get into your hub. And um, all these kind of bits, they're made from steel. I put that on a magnet here, it's a steel piece. So once the moisture gets in there, it'll start rusting it and potentially causing problems for these. So yeah, we're just gonna, it has to go on this way as well. The chances of you getting it over on this end is kind of slim. Like you're probably gonna damage the seal if you do it that way. So yeah, the flat end faces towards you. I'm just gonna try and thread that on. I mean, the one on here was a bit of a nightmare. It's a bit of a tighter fit, it just must be a newer uh, free hub, just with less wear on it. But yeah, let's get on to the free hub pores and we'll kind of install some of them. Yeah, so in terms of the kind of free hub pores, they're quite easy to install. Uh, like I said, we're just going to run a bit of grease on the kind of rounded edge there. Probably won't even see it on camera, it's just going to be a tiny, minimal amount really. Um, I did kind of clean it up, I haven't got any cotton buds, I would have liked to got rid of some of that black uh, stuff in there but it won't really do any harm and I'm just gonna pop a little bit on there and basically that goes on the right hand side so it goes into this one if you do it on that one it's gonna not engage properly it's gonna be reversed I'll show you what I mean afterwards but um, these little springs they fit in that way See like the longer lower bit sits on the bottom. I've got a little bit of grease on my hand, so I will put it on that little edge as well. So we pop that into there. And what you gotta do is just push that out of the way, the little spring. Maybe get like a little flat end just to hold it. There we go, that one. Done alright. And you just got to do that for all four, they're all the same. And then once that's done, I'll fit it onto the wheel. I'm going to take the uh, seal off just to show you the engagement. So yeah, in terms of this area, all I've done was um, just basically put a rag in there and spun the wheel just to clean most of that up. So first things first, we're just going to put the uh, washer back on. A little one millimeter washer just slots on there. Um, like I said, I've taken the seal off of this, it's just to show you the engagement, so you can see the paws hitting onto the teeth. I find if you just turn it the way it's going to click, they kind of slot in then. So let's try and get this into some sort of shot there. And then as you turn it, you can see the little clicker there. And then that's how uh, the system engages. Anything that's not too good is you still got quite a bit of uh, float. So if you imagine you're pedaling, what's going to happen is you're going to get to there and it's going to move the pedals back and forth. Um, I think some people actually cut down the pores so they engage a little bit earlier. So you'd have like one normal length, one short, one normal, one short. And that would mean that um, the teeth kind of engage in a kind of non-symmetrical way at different times. So you wouldn't have this kind of movement because one of the teeth would already be engaged. I'm not really sure why they do it all at the same time. Maybe it's the strength thing. But yeah, there you go. There's the kind of mechanism system there. I'm just going to fix 
the seal and then put it all back together. So yeah, we put the seal back on. I'm just gonna pop that onto there. I'm just gonna turn that. And then we're just gonna push the green seal so that it's seated on there. It could be easier said than done. Especially with this old one, because it's a little bit out of shape. Get it on that side. And just make sure that the green seal is nice and flush, that it's not sticking out. There we go, that's the last bit, I think. And just make sure that your free hub can spin freely without getting into anything. And then wherever we put the end cap, I'm going to grab a bit of grease, a tiny little bit of blue grease and just stick that on the rubber. And there's your uh, Shimano uh, free up on a Pro 4. And if you wanted to make that quieter, you can put some grease uh, inside with a pause engage just a little bit and it will make that ratchet system a little bit quieter if you wanted to. But some people like the noise. is I've fitted this uh, XD driver to a different wheel and we've added just a little bit of grease on the inside so you can see they kind of quietens things down considerably compared to basically this Shimano one. So yeah, if that's something that annoys you with some of these hubs and 